And those stories were told and retold. Mm -hmm. Told and retold mm -hmm. until they were so part of our being that we in turn could tell those stories. And I can recall talking about uh, uh, that area. Mm -hmm. And the, in, in the old days, pe people would gather. Yeah, they call them camps, Ash. They would, uh, like the Hunk Papas, and the. Uh, we choked uh, Yeah, and they, they had to come and, and camp together. Huh. And that's when they would, uh, the young men would court the young lady girls because they didn't want to marry uh, uh, girls of their own. Huh. They would get together like that, and probably it would then uh, time, we uh, time. June Bear time, ah. and it was and that was a time when they would come, ah. because this everything was was right with the with the with the uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, ah, the, ah. The, 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 the the sun and the moon, ah. everything was just right, and so they would come down there, and they would meet and come down and have uh, 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 gatherings, <laughs> and as I recall, they would take and and. Uh, that was when the young men could court the young ladies, mm -hmm. and as a result of that, well, then they were they would be able to uh, uh, marry, and and, uh, and and establish their own little homes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was telling you about uh, 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 when I was down when I was uh, when I was uh, living down there. Uh, your father, uh, Henry. Uh, was probably, if I were to uh, be able to explain it in in, uh, in terms that it could be understood by the Washichu people, was that he would be what they would call in today's society a historian. Mm -hmm. You know that the things he told you, mm -hmm. and he was a man who had a gift. And I think that it comes from a, uh, 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 from a, from somewhere uh, a mystical, almost spiritual. And your father had a had that uh, uh, gift of being a historian, mm -hmm. and so he knew all of these old old stories. Mm -hmm. And I think what happened was your grandfather, mm -hmm. who was also had that particular talent mm -hmm. would tell him. You see, and we had no written language. Mm -hmm. us, uh, our, our history had to be uh, verbal, mm -hmm. which of course everybody knows. Yeah. We know that. And so uh, I can recall so, so well that uh, those, uh, those old men would get together and, and uh, uh, the women the, the 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 women of the of the uh, uh, of the household would feed the men first, mm -hmm. and then the men would go and sit someplace and have their pipe and chanupaki. They'd, uh, they'd smoke the pipe and and um, uh, then they would start visiting. And uh, it was so strange to me because uh, 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 those some of those old old men that would come and visit uh, my grandfather. Uh, Tipi Sapa, uh, they would sometimes sit in silence uh, for several minutes. When I say that, I mean a half an hour. Mm. And never say anything, but they would kind of uh, like, um, and they had little tweezers like this. It was about that broad. they go out there. Like that, and sing a little tune under their voice, and then pretty soon, it seems as though that the spirit would move them into a dimension where they where they were in this place, and they say, "You don't can't talk, you know," and so such and such happened. Oh. And then he says, yeah, "Do you remember?" Yes, oh hey, yes, I remember. And when they talked about going over to that, to that uh, that butte. Hmm. And I, I was thinking of Reliance. Gosh, it's, it's north of there, isn't it? It's 20 miles east of Pier. 20 miles east of Pier, exactly. Uh -huh. 
It's the yep. northernmost boundary of yes. the Hunkwa Reservation. Yep. Yep. Well, anyhow, uh, we used to come down, and, and I can remember coming in 28, I think it was 28, they had a convocation down at, uh, at uh, White Swan. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody came in team and wagon in those days, because there was no well, there was no roads, mm -hmm. just uh, just uh, where they used to travel, you know. Mm -hmm. and they would come and come together, and there, were, and, and there was very very few Washichu farmers there, but there was some, but there was one that had, were near where this where this butte was. And so he, whenever they'd come, and he'd say, "Please come and camp." He said, we have water and what you need, anything you need, let me know and I'll see that you get it. And so, uh, uh, as I recall from, the, from uh, uh, listening to those old men, that this uh, uh, butte that uh, old uh, Saswe went over there to, uh, to, to uh, Hambalechia, huh. Hambalechia hmm. to have a vision. And he went over there like that. And uh, four days, I think, and four nights. And so what happens is that after you have got any, eaten or drank any water and everything like this, you get lightheaded. And so your mind takes over, and you're able to see things, and you can feel things. And so he was in that state, and he saw all these things that... Uh, that uh, he realized it was going to happen to uh, the uh, Ihantua people. Mm. And so uh, he, was, he was very, very uh, sad about it. And so uh, he had uh, previously had killed four men uh, uh, in his life, and one of them was uh, abused his daughter. One of them was, uh, for any, any other world, Four reasons, and I, if you need them, I'll get them for you. Mm. And so he had killed those four men. So he th he thought, well, I am now I have to, I have to pay for these, all these things like that. However, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. But uh, he, when he started to get up like this, he looked down and out this, all around him was these rattlesnakes, just thick and they're just crawling all over the place. And so. Uh, 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 Spot Eagle went over there, and uh, they said, where's Sasue? So uh, Spot Eagle was a, a, a young, like a, uh, like a uh, uh, what do they call those guys when they go looking around for things? Uh, uh, they look for, uh, you know, they scout. Scout. Yeah, he was like a scout. Yeah, hi. He went up there, and he came back to the, to the camp, and he was crying. And he said, well, he said, I went over there, he said, but he said, uh, uh, after she's gone. Mm. He, said, uh, he, said, he said, there was rattlesnakes all over, so he said, I know he was eaten by rattlesnakes. And so uh, the way the story goes is that, uh, so everybody was in mourning, you know how they do. Everything was, they were all in mourning, and pretty soon they looked over like this, and here it come riding into camp. And they said, and so they, they uh, questioned uh, Spot Eagle, they said, I thought you told me that, they told us that he was, and he said, yes. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, he felt bad because he felt that maybe they thought that he was not telling the truth. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but Saswe said, no, no, what he saw was true. And so that er area in that, where that uh, butte was, was very, very, very sacred to them. Mm -hmm. And so they had, uh, and I don't know if it's still there or not, but they had little, kind of little holes dug. Yeah, they're still there. Are they still there? And there's rocks all the time. Yeah, there are rocks. And they would sit and they would lay in there for four days and four nights into Hamadechia. Uh, Hamadechia. Mm. And so they would take a vision. And so th that was a very, very holy place. And so I remember coming from uh, Wakpala with my, with my folks, and uh, we'd always come, and uh, the, us little boys would ride our horses and come behind. And then, then the uh, mother and father would come in a team, and they'd bring their, 
they, they bring their uh, 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 either a wall, wall tent or teepee, the teepee, like that, and all their food and everything, yeah. like that, and they would camp. And they, so they would camp down near there. And this, uh, this uh, Washichu uh, 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 rancher said, yes, come, please come and stay here in our place like this. And so I forgot how long it took to get down there, but it took several days, because mm -hmm. he had the silver night, you know, going down to, uh, to uh, Greenwood. And so they, have a, a, they would have a convocation down there. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so one time I was visiting uh, my brother Wilford, who is now dead, uh, and I. I said, I have to go down and see uh, my brother, Henry. He said, why? He said, uh, brother, he said, I'll go with you. I said, okay, come with me. I said, we'll go down to Lake Indies. I said, oh, because he lives down there. So I came down and uh, uh, where you live down there. Uh -huh. Yeah. I came down there. So I have pictures of your place and everything. Oh, so I'll, I'll have to show it to you. Uh -huh. And so we sat and we visited for, oh. Hours. Oh yeah, for hours, and then and then we'd 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 uh, eat, and then we'd, we'd visit some more, and and uh, uh, and sing songs and so forth, mm -hmm. and uh, he'd tell stories. And uh, what what really impressed me, really really impressed me was says, oh, hey, I'm now beginning to understand something. Where would our history be were it not for my brother, Henry Bardio? Mm -hmm. He could remember names. Mm -hmm. He could remember places. He could remember either the weather, whether it was Makaju or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he would tell those stories. And in telling those stories, uh, I could, I would close my eyes, and I could see it. It's like a moving picture. He tell those stories, and I could just see as plainly what he was saying, like this. And uh, because we had to have that, we didn't have anything written. We couldn't, have, you know, we couldn't go and look in a book and find out what had happened. We had to depend entirely on, on uh, uh, those, uh, the, 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 the meta. Those people like your father. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, uh, whether there was any others that had that uh, same uh, properties, I don't know, but I don't think so. Mm -hmm. But they're very, yes. very individual. Mm -hmm. They're the only ones in an entire band. Mm -hmm. One in an entire band of people, and of course. Now, when they talk about the Sioux tribe, I mean, it seems so, you know, uh, because when they say that, they're, it's like talking about uh, a whole country. Mm -hmm. Because, but we were little, little bands, Small. little bands here, little band there, like uh -huh. this, and and, and uh, the White Swan Band was right there, mm -hmm. right out, right there, overlooking the, uh, overlooking the uh, Missouri River, Mini mm Choche. -hmm. And that doesn't mean muddy water like they say. Choche means kind of royally, uh -huh. like a little sand here. Uh -huh. It's not muddy. Mm -hmm. But uh, they, they always, uh, in the books and so forth, they talk about the big muddy or the muddy. Uh -huh. so it, it wasn't muddy. Yeah. Yeah. But I can remember with your father and myself and uh, Ambrose, and, uh, and we'd go down there and we'd swim. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, none of us would swim like this. We'd, we kind of like this, and oh, right across here you see like gray, because <laughs> that that little uh, filter of, of uh, sand, and that's uh -huh. uh, the choche stuff would stick on our skins oh. like that. So we come and oh. my grandma would say, "Oh, you've been swimming." Oh, I'd say, "My goodness, that woman is smart." <laughs> and I said, "Hi," she said, "You got a high water mark." High water mark, yeah. <laughs> so anyhow, if we, and that's how we would do it, and then. And then uh, 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 they used to have a, uh, uh, I remember so well, they, uh, 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 
we'd go down and, and, and we'd always ride horseback. And we'd go down to, on Sunday, on Sunday we'd always go to church. Mm -hmm. We'd always go to White Swan Church. And then when the uh, services were over, and we'd all meet up toward, uh, 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 what's it called, place up north of it, up the river. Uh-huh. Grandpa uh, William? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'd, we'd meet up there. Uh -huh. And so we'd have horse races. And we'd have, oh, and, your, your, and we'd, ha we'd have everything. Uh -huh. All kinds of different sports. Uh -huh. But you see, it was a hangover from the old days. They said, we want our young men to be active, uh -huh. to be... Uh, uh, so they were in training. Always in training. Uh, in training. And you remember your father. Uh -huh. He was hard as a rock. Uh -huh. and he was a good boxer. Uh -huh. and, and we did that. And that's how I learned. And when, and when I won the All Service Lightweight Championship, I, I, I remembered your, 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 my, my brother. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, uh, and the girls, oh, oh, hey, boy, those girls were so... Horse women. Yes, and talented. Mm -hmm. And all of them, for some reason, they all knew how to sew. So, f my goodness, you, the, those stitches where you can hardly, they were like that. Today they have a machine, machine go like that, they're not that far apart. But they do it like this, stitches this far uh -huh. apart. And they would make clothing for the men, mm -hmm. and of course clothing for themselves too. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 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 and so we'd wear a humpback chakra. Not beads, mm -hmm. but just uh, in the head, uh, like uh, uh, elk mm -hmm. uh, uh, or a, 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 a buffalo, that uh, the skin is thick, mm -hmm. particularly right here on the back, mm -hmm. right there between the shoulders. That's where they cut. That's tough they cut the, they cut, yeah, they cut that, and that's where. And then they sew. When they sew the thing, they, they, like this is the bottom. Instead of going underneath there like this, they go to the side. Because if you walk on it, pretty soon they're going to be, you're going to wear the, yeah. the thread out, see? Yeah. And so, you wonder, as you get older, how did they know those things? Mm -hmm. But you see, they were students of nature. They were students of the animal kingdom. And the universe. In the universe. They were students of how to live with all of the beauties that they received at birth, mm -hmm. you see. And I can remember they were telling about the birth of a child. And I think you probably know this, but I'll repeat it just for the, for the sake of this. Mm -hmm. They said that uh, 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 a young married woman, when she first felt uh, life within her body, she would put all negative things out of her mind. And so here's the, here's, the, here's, the, here's the senses. She first would smell of washlimina, something, you know, like flowers, thinking that smell would go down and somehow implant in that fetus the, 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 the sense of smell. Until she would listen to birds singing, or, or, or another good one as I like was real well was the tall grass like that was this tall, and when the wind goes it goes, mm -hmm. kind of like a like a, uh, a song. A song. Yeah, and she would listen to that, thinking again. That would go down in into the little fetus's ears. Mm -hmm. Like that, and then she would taste that could go down in uh, uh, if it was June wheat bars or the or the choke cherries. Huh. Another way, uh, uh, chapai, you know. Chapai. Yeah, and, and then it get, when it gets black, oh. in about Ju about uh, uh, second week in June, huh. it's real black, juicy, and eat that. And she tasted, thinking that it would go down and develop the taste mm -hmm. in this little fetus. And uh, then she would, uh, with her eyes, look at all different things. 
and look a long ways, as far as she could look, and then come bring it back up here like this. And so she'd see right around her like this, thinking again that that, that was going to, because you see, uh, one of the things that, uh, that uh, you will find among the old, old people is that they didn't, very few of them wore glasses. Mm -hmm. very, very, and they'd be old, old people. Their eyesights were good. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe that that whole thing had, a me, had some, some value. Mm -hmm. Because we, when, when we do things, we become, we become what we feel and what we know and who we are. Mm -hmm. It's like your, your little ones. So we you gain mastery over it. Hatchetu, hatchetu, yeah. hatchetu. So yeah. anyhow, that was one of the things that, uh, that uh, she would do. Then, when she felt that it was time, in the meantime, she would uh, talk to an old lady who had had many children. Mm -hmm. And so uh, she would find, and generally, they'd always time their, the birth of their ch children uh, to, uh, to, uh, their, uh, to their, when it was warm, mm -hmm. spring probably because everything starts growing in spring. Mm -hmm. And so, but of course that all changed as time went on. And so she would go and have selected a place, nice place where she could be by herself and she would take the necessary things. And then an old, old lady would come, but would never stay inside of her. She, she didn't want nobody to witness this. Mm -hmm. Only the witness of the birth of this child would be the wakataka. Mm -hmm. You see, to witness the birth of this child, mm -hmm. and so she would lay there like that. However, if she needed help, then she could call the old lady, mm -hmm. and the old lady would come and help her. But normally, uh, in those days, they had exercised; the women would exercise, and so that uh, when it was time to birth their children, they birthed them without any problem. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh, but you see, you have to be active. You can't be sitting down all the time and, and uh, uh, staying inside uh -huh. and eating and so forth like this. You have to be, what's called, so the muscles are strong. Mm -hmm. so, and, when that, uh, and so that's, that's, uh, that's one of the things that, that I heard, heard them talk about. So even way back then, the little one, Nagik uh, Sapa, the, it's like the, the intelligence being nurtured. Hechetu, yes, exactly. Precisely, so that they said, uh, <coughs> they said that the uh, uh, that when the when the when the child was delivered, in the spirit of the wind, blew <sighs> into his face, <sighs> he suck in the air. And that's when he started breathing. Mm -hmm. However, his growth didn't start then. It had already started nine months oh, prior, prior to that time. And that's the reason why our old Dakota men and women, our old Dakota men and women, okay. that's the reason why, daughter, is that our people, you have to understand there was no hospitals. There was no uh, birthing places. In other words, uh, the women, it was their, uh, uh, really, I tell you, I, 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 maybe I'm going to be wrong when I say this. I'm going to say it anyhow. It was a woman's, woman's privilege to birth a child mm -hmm. because he might be a warrior mm -hmm. to come and protect her and the little ones who are coming after him if it's a boy, mm -hmm. you see. And so they were very, very uh, cognizant of, of, of the whole process. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and all the duties and responsibilities that went. Etchit And so th those are things that I can remember uh, uh, those old, old men and old, old ladies talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, and like I said, uh, my grandmother, the third, that it would be my, my grandfather's third wife, and uh, she had no children. Chata, uh, she treated me so well because she had no child of her own. Mm -hmm. So I go to Lake Andes, and, uh, and so 
she couldn't speak, uh, she never spoke. She made, a, in other words, she made a statement. She said, uh, Trump was there, she said, I'll never speak one word of English. Oh, yeah. As long as I live. Uh -huh. So when is the lake ended? So it, 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 it. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Tajeki. So, yeah, do it. yeah. And so anyhow, so here, uh, uh, she would tell me. She said, "Talk with your chin." She, oh, so she said, "Say, oh, she got. I want to. I need a, a sack of, of flour." That's when they used to have in linen, real linen, real linen uh, cloth, mm -hmm. not the uh, cloth. Uh, What's it called, called? But linen. Mm -hmm. Oh, they used to. They used to even make dresses out of them. Oh. You know? Yeah. The what color, was her name? Uh, 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 decora. Decora. She's from Rosebud. Oh. Yeah, Decora. Oh. Oh. And I don't know now uh, whether she had been married or or not before. But but my my mother's mother was the first one. Mm -hmm. Then Uncle Vine's mother, uh, Sully, she was the next one, and then. And then uh, the uh, rosebud woman, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, uh, so anyhow, <coughs> she would, I would go to town with her, and that's when they had a counter right here like this, and all the stuff was up up on the shelves up there like mm -hmm. that. And they had a barrel like this, and over there had, uh, they had uh, 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 flour. The dry goods. Huh? Yeah, dry goods. And then, and then uh, they had, uh, 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 coffee, but it was in beans, uh -huh. in coffee beans, about like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then everybody had a little thing, and they put that in there and okay. crank it. You probably do you have one? We used to, but yeah, yeah, yeah well, crank it like that. that. Yeah, and then and then uh, the coffee they would boil it, and it had a kind of a of a uh, thing like this, like this had a handle like that, uh -huh. and and they would boil enough there. Maybe coffee would last you two or three days. They'd boil it, you know, and then they would, uh, and, and it went. And strange thing, I don't know why they did this, but they would crack an egg and then put the shell in there, egg shell. And the doggone. Uh, in the, the coffee? Yeah, and the, and the, and the, and the little fibers oh. would all disappear. It would all go, and it's oh. all pure coffee. That it seems to me like is, is something in this. There must be a chemical reaction. Chemical reaction where that would suck those, uh, those little. Pieces of uh, of uh, coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you see, you'd have, you know, if you boil it. Yeah. But you'd have. You it isn't like it isn't like percolated. Yeah. Percolated. Oh. And so, cause they boiled it. So anyhow, I'd go over there with her, and so she, she would tell me what she wanted, and so uh, I used to laugh because. And that that girl, she I ask her, what else do you want? So she said, say, she would say uh, something like. Uh, I want a uh, 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 kalia bit, uh, yeah. She 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 was from a, she was from a, a rosebud, so she was spoke with L. What kalia bit? I want she. So I said. So then I I then I would try to trick her into saying something in English, and I said, "Is she?" Then he'd write it down. He said, "Is that all?" And I said, "No, no." I said, "She wants some a car." Car, is she just about to fall off her chair? Car, she little, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to make me say something in English, and so I won't do it. Oh, and the thing you see, those are those were things. All of those things had so much meaning. Uh huh. And uh. So and when I visited down t with my brother and I went to visit down with your father, <coughs> and we got to, we got to laughing about it because he he would have uh, uh, similar experiences, uh -huh. you see. And both yeah, so. yeah. And so because, uh, but we were no, no, and the thing I love so much about those people is that uh, they were you, you never saw anybody strike a child. Never, 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 never strike a child, mm -hmm. because you, if you start him when he's a, just a little fella, no a little idea. girl like this, and teach him the difference between uh, uh, make the right things easy for him to do, and the wrong things hard for him to do. That's all. And I, and, and so one time somebody asked me, says Phil, he says, 
how in the world do you get these horses to do that? I said, it's an old Indian trick. I said, I learned it from, from my old people. He said, what's that? I said, I make the right things easy for them to do and the wrong things hard for them to do, and that's all there is to it. I said, I don't have to beat them. And so they never, never touched their children. And so one time, they was over to uh, 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 this old lady, what was her name? Uh, oh, gosh, she had, a ter she had a terrible name. Uh, uh, she lived down at, uh, toward, yeah. Um, that was her name. Mm -hmm. Hey. Oh, she had a terrible name. It was, I mean, it was a mean. Uh. <laughs> but anyhow, huh. so uh, they have Wilma Nietzsche down there, uh -huh. see? And so the, this little girl had gone to school. And uh, this, uh, 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 this uh, 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 deaconess kind of like uh, uh, spanked her. She got hysterical. <gasps> she just, she never had been hit in her that life. That had never happened. Oh. She got hysterical. And so she ran to her mother. And so, it, and, and she couldn't get anything out of her because she was <laughs> like that. Oh. And finally she told her, she said, what happened? She said, that woman hit me. Oh. In those days, are the old women, all the women, carried a knife because they used it to skin with, mm -hmm. you know. For their work? Yeah, for their work. They cut and they would know, they knew every piece of, of, uh, of muscle on the, mm -hmm. what's called, the back mm -hmm. muscles, the chest muscles, the muscles in the, uh, in the, in the eggs and so forth. And, <coughs> boy, she started up that hill for that, after that deaconess. And so some people said, we'd better get up there and get her out of there because this woman will kill her. Mm -hmm. and so they all ran, so some buddies would run up there like this with, uh, on, uh, she, had, she had to walk up a hill to get up there. And so they jumped on a horse and rode up there like that and they grabbed her and they put her way back in a, in a in kind of like, had a, rem, uh, I don't know whether, whether you remember this or not, but they used to make ice in a river mm -hmm. and put so it in yeah. sawdust. I, they told me about it, but I didn't yeah, see you it. Yeah, it was yeah. after your time. They took and hit her back there. And she had her knife. And she meant to kill that woman. Protect. Yeah, she meant to kill her because she had done that to her daughter. She, she hit her. They hit the daughter. The daughter had never, never, never been hit. But we, but, uh, and, and all the time that I grew up, I never, I never knew I've ever, I never, never was hit. Mm -hmm. I remember one time, I was living with Grandpa and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, he had, uh, uh, Grandpa had a, a kind of a stroke, like. So Aunt Ella and Aunt Uncle Vine said, well, we'll move him to go to uh, live in Mobridge. But he never liked it. He never liked it. He was over there like that. School started, so uh, uh, the first day of school, I went over there. So they said the school starts today. So somebody told me that. So I went over there like that. And I stood around there like that, and the bell rang, and everybody disappeared. I stood there for, for a little while. It was morning. See the sun shining? Mm -hmm. So I went home. Next day I went the same again. Bell rang. Everybody disappeared in this room. I went home. I said, so, so finally I didn't go anymore. So I told her, I said, uh, 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 my grandfather, uh, uh, he said, uh, Grandson, he said, why? He said, aren't you going to school? I said, no. I said, I said, I go over there. I said, but they ring a bell. I said, everybody disappears. I said, so I come home. He said, uh-huh. So my Aunt Ella came home. So here I was at home. The school was going on, see. So she said, uh, Philip, uh, she said, isn't this today's school day? And I said, I don't know. She said, well, you, what do you mean you don't know? He said, she said, uh, he, I said, well, I said, I go there, but I said, I don't, I never have gone. So she said, Ate. She said, Father, do you realize that your grandson isn't going to school? He said, yes, he said, I realize that, but he said, he'll learn more from me than he will in a school he doesn't even know how to get into. <laughs> and so I stayed home. That's when they sent me to Haskell. Oh, yeah. 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 
But, you, but, but uh, the thing, the thing that, I, uh, that I was so appreciative of was the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And just think how much was lost when Fort Randall Dam came and that whole lifestyle was wiped out. And it's been so hard to regain any of that. Mm -hmm. That's the battle that we have now. Mm -hmm. Like when you were talking about that Meadowlark song. Yeah. Can you tell that one about yeah. the Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to change tapes here. Okay. okay. Off by himself and uh, yeah. Okay. Now uh, we'll have to we'll have to kind of get back to where we were. Where were we? <laughs> with um, something about going to school. Oh, with oh. Um, what that life way that was wiped out and all those things like we were talking about the meditative way. Yes. Like your your grandpa or oh, Grandpa Deloria yeah. would always do that, and then the thing that we were going to talk about was the the being able to talk to the. Wamakashka, uh -huh. ash um, zitkanaki. Whenever it sank, that yeah, metal work. Yeah. <coughs> so anyhow, this this story was uh, was told to. I, my grandfather told me this uh, many many years when I was just a boy. He said, one time he said uh, they were calling over toward uh, Montana, crying woman creek ik ikta, uh -huh. and so that's over there toward the uh, little Bighorn River. Uh, I uh, forgot what the name, anyhow. So they were coming back, and for some reason, he said, the people, there was a tremendous epidemic came on to them, and they couldn't eat. And so they were kind of dying rather alarmingly. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there was this one man, uh, 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 he was a big, tall, slender man, but he was just wasted away to almost, till he was just skin and bones. And you know how they used to make the little willow backrest? Mm -hmm. You know, they put them like this, and then they put a stick uh -huh. like this so it could sit. So he was sitting like that, back on that willow thing back here like this. And it was uh, just about, the, the sun was just about to break the horizon and come up, you know. And they, they always say that it wipes, uh, the sun uh, grandfather comes up and wipes all the darkness away. So everything is light so you can see everything. So there he was, sitting there, like that. And he looked down there, and he was shook out. His poor little wife, she was so tired from taking care of him. That she was laying over there in the bed grass, like that. But about that time, he thought he heard something. And he looked out there like this, and here was a little warrior, all dressed in yellow buckskin clothes, sitting on that little limb, like that, like this, sitting there like this. And he sang this song. Ni tonka shila wana hina pelohe Kikta hiaena kalyaena kahum heayo He chanu pikiha nawa heshni tayaya upikta he Like that. In the uh, words in English go Your grandfather the son is about to uh, break over the horizon and wipe out the darkness. So he said, sit right up, brew it up, gulp it down, and your people will live without diminishing. So there he was, like that. Pretty soon his little wife woke up. Munochcha, you. So he said, he told the story. He said that little, it was a little, oh, oh, then. By, by that by the time the the, uh, the little warrior, he when he got through something like that, he jumped and it turned into a little meadowlark. Mm -hmm. He flew away. Mm -hmm. And when he did, he broke off a little piece of that branch about that long. Mm -hmm. So when she he said, uh, 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 so when his wife came over there, he told her, when I said, go over there. He said where that little and, and as I understand, it was a little uh, lilac tree, one of those little bushes about uh -huh. that tall, little lilac tree. And it was a branch about that long. Mm -hmm. So he said, go on. And she said, you look on the ground. He said, there'll be a little branch. He said, bring that in. So he said, what, what for? So he said, well, he said, this little warrior told me to brew it up. So he says, so she said, all right. So she had a pot over there going like that water. So she put the whole thing in, leaves and all, the whole thing. And by golly, you know, the darn thing, he said, after a while, I think it, 
it all turned red. So that even well, so she ladled some stuff out. You know how they had those ladles mm -hmm. with the long handles like that. She ladled some stuff out and gave it to him like this. In that for, for that in that evening, for the first time, he was hungry. Mm -hmm. So he she said so she he said when uh, I said could you make me a little bit of of uh, mm -hmm. So uh -huh, so she did. She gave it to him like that, and he started getting better and better and better. Oh. And finally, uh, uh, he told other people. And the whole band down there, like that on the, on the Yankton Reservation. Uh-huh. It helped them. They all came back. Okay. And so they, that was a song. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah. And so those, the, you see the things like this. And so, and so what, what I feel is that at my age <coughs> is that there's such a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. But I think that people who are really, really spiritual can receive uh, knowledge, if you want to call it knowledge, or indications or something. Mm -hmm. Because <coughs> you look at an animal, and a bear, uh, they have their, their babies, mm -hmm. and they nurse their babies, and so forth like this, and they take them out and show the babies how to hunt and so forth. But there's a limit to that, you see. Just like with our children, mm -hmm. we can't, we can't you can't nurse your baby till they're walking around. And, but, uh, so what they do is they, uh, they, 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 they teach their young to be very, very obedient as you were taught to be obedient mm -hmm. by your people. Mm -hmm. And so the, uh, at that given time, the mother bear runs the little ones up the tree mm -hmm. and she disappears. So they sit up there, and they sit up there, and sit up there, and out this little, they get hungry, see? And finally they go down. But this time she's taught them all these things. Mm -hmm. So they go out hunting for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so that the, the it is, and that's the way of the mankind. We continue to live. In that cycle. In that cycle. Yeah. You see? Okay. And so, so what we, what those old to people told us, and showed us was how to live and live in, 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 in a beauty, beauty of, of life itself. Yeah. And so uh, 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 Philip, when he was a, a, a little boy, why, uh, I started him that way. And uh, uh, I was uh, gone in the service. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I didn't see him till he was old. It's about three, four months old. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was gone, why well, his mother didn't she even hardly even show that she was going to have a baby. So I got the t telephone, or t I mean, telegraph over to uh, 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 Norfolk, Virginia. I was in the Navy, saying that he said, well, I said, You're, you have a son. I said, oh, my age. So I went, and then it has a big parade ground. Out this, it must be about 40 acres. Mm -hmm. hey, yeah, that's a lot. Not flat, you know. And so they have lights over here where, where, the, where the camp is, all lights like that, and, and barracks like that. So I went way over there like that, way as far as I could get away from the lights, because I wanted to be close, you see? Yeah. And so, and when I, yeah, so when I go over there like that, I took time and I, and I, and I, and I, and I prayed uh -huh. for my boy. And, uh, uh -huh. uh, and so, I never told anybody that, but if somebody if somebody would have thought that was very very strange, mm -hmm. that you would do that. Mm -hmm. But but when you're raised that way, yeah. And the, there's places like that all over, like yeah. the like the Medicine Knoll. What mm -hmm. you said is that when they, you would make that journey up to Wakbala, yeah. that would be a special place to yes. stop and offer prayer yes. for the people and mm -hmm. for the Teoshbayas, and then when you go on down to White Swan. Mm -hmm. One of the stories that you told, I think, is really important for the White Swan work because you said above Sunrise Hill, over towards where that yes. my family lived, there was a man who was yeah. asked to be buried there yes. and he wanted to be protected. Yes. And that's some of the land that we would like to have returned to the tribe. Yes. Yeah, that was where Sifa Stone lived, over uh -huh. kind of on the flat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he, he lived there, and uh, so his, his uh, granddaughter, Said, I'll have my sons. 
find a nice big tree, big limb sticking out. He said, we'll put you over there like that. Mm -hmm. Then he said, you can watch your beloved Missouri River, uh, mini chauchet, mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, 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 for throughout, throughout eternity. Uh -huh. Yeah, they like to use something, uh -huh. words like that. Here? No, 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 no. He said, here. No. Bury me over there on that high ground over there, like that. And he said, put me down in that. He said, dig it nice and deep. He said, put some grass first. Lay me down in there like this and put some grass on me. Then he said, put some big stones. Find some stones like that. And then he said, the last foot, he said, put back the earth that you took off in the, the thing like this. And he said, I will lay there uh, for, uh, throughout eternity and, and uh, horses will graze over my, my grave. But you see, the thought, mm -hmm. the way they thought, was so uh, in tune mm -hmm. with with uh, all of all of all of creation. life, creation, uh -huh. of all that was made, and, and things that we, we we maybe we took for granted. And, and see, the important part of that story, um, Ate, is that on that butte, the core is wanting yes. to transfer that land to the state, so. Those stories are really important because what that ancestor asked for was that peace to be left alone. Exactly. And if they turn exactly. it over to the state, then he's going to be disturbed. Exactly. And, and, and the thing about it is, that, that, to me, that's a very simple thing because they, 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 when, uh, in the early days, that land from the Missouri West was all theirs. Mm -hmm. every, every square foot mm -hmm. cleared over to the Rockies. Yeah, and then then you, 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 you and then you and then of course you hear you always uh, hear about the uh, the Oglala people who came that way, and but uh, uh, in the uh, uh, but you see uh, the people from our, our country down there like this, they were very very uh, uh, um, not receptive, but they were uh, mm, had vision. They had vision and realized that those days were all gone. Mm. Think of the sadness. The sadness. And, and sometimes I think, like when we go down to White Swan, with yeah. the, when the Titak Uyaki, when they came up, yes. we felt like they were kind of happy in a way yes. that we were there to protect yes. them. Yes, yes, and yes. So we could, so it was kind of like they, it's almost like they came to life. In a way, so that was really a teaching for us. But just think, the land has so many of those stories mm -hmm. and those things, and the people might not be physically in there anymore, but you can still feel it. Oh yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. That's really important. Yeah. And on the um, the other thing I wanted to know with um, especially with some of the white swan work, if somehow in if we could let the core know and the government know, because as of January 1st, that land along the river above White Swan, they're trying to give it to the state. And what's what? That? Yeah, that's what they're trying mm -hmm. to do. Hey, and what they can't do that. No, and that's what we're trying to get across to them, that that's our ancestral people, some of them are buried there, and also there's medicines there that grow nowhere oh, else. Oh, no place. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we uh -huh. want to the importance of, of keeping that, and we'll be meeting with the core next week, so we hope that we'll be able to hang on to that, but I think we need prayers for that. Uh, yeah. do, you, do you know about Macau Uh The mouse beans? Yeah. 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 There's you a see, whole bunch of them down there, uh, yeah. right, in that you see, Because, you see, uh, I remember that my grandmother would, would, would go down there, and of course, that's the reason why they said the mice and the women were enemies because they'd run up there like, but uh, they'd steal their beans. Yeah, they, they, knew, they, they, knew they were scared because they'd run uh, run up a uh, old lady's leg. Uh huh. Yeah, and so they were, uh, uh, they were always the mice and the men, all women were enemies. But I can remember, boy, that was good. But like about like that. Uh huh. Yeah. And they still grow in that crypt because yeah. we went and we. They did you some. really? Yeah. La two months ago, we went down there, and they're still growing. All the rest of the land is plowed up, but that 
that crick right north yeah. of White Swan, yeah. they still grow in that crick. They do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're still there. Okay. But a lot of other places they no longer grow because yeah. it has to be kind of wet along yeah. there and that's where they grow. Yeah, I think to me that creek going back up there like that is where uh, uh, Fred Barber lived. Oh. Fred Barber lived up that way. Uh-huh. And uh, then uh, uh, right across uh, the Sophie and Sarah lived up this way and then over here was uh, uh, Drapo mm-hmm. lived right there. And uh, and then down, of course, was uh, was uh, was uh, uh, was uh, yeah, your uncle down there lived down there. Robert. Yeah, and they lived down there. And uh, uh, Susan Rundell. Yeah, <laughs> Rundell had a little bit of like that on the other side. And uh, Jiminy Crackers, I tell you what, uh, it was just so. Uh, that land is absolutely just, just dying for seeds to come. Mm-hmm. And they used to they 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 they, uh, they well, she just put corn in there. Mm-hmm. Welcome to that chat. Just gosh. grow. Huh? You could almost see it growing. Uh-huh. No kidding, I'm not kidding you. You can almost see that grow, corn growing. Uh huh. Right below us, there like this. And that's when I was telling you about the Hopkins. Uh huh. He lived right there. And they, so you could see that doggone corn almost, you could, all, you could hear it. Oh, my goodness. I'm not kidding you. You could hear that corn growing. And, uh, 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 and then they had a, a, a wagon. They had a kind of a board on one side. And they and, and had those t- horses trained so they'd walk so fast. Mm-hmm. Like that. And they'd pull that wagon, and they'd go, or the cup and that bounce and go into the uh-huh. thing. And, I, and, and so uh, see that piece below the church belonged to the church, belonged to uh, the St. Philip's Church mm-hmm. there, and all that down to Hopkins. Mm-hmm. And he, he would uh, farm it, and then he would give back to the church mm-hmm. that corn. And I remember uh, uh, we had corn in our, in our uh, uh, barn, and so one time I told my grandfather, I said, you know, you got all this corn. I said, you know, my goodness, I said, it's so much. I said, well, there's no room for any more. So I said, what, what would you say if I would throw that in the wagon and take it into Lake Andes and sell it to the greenery? Oh, hey, don't crush me, go on. He said, yes, fine. You know, and that's, and that's strange how those old people were. <laughs> if, they, if, you, if they thought you were able to do it, Mm-hmm. They never questioned. They respected your decision. No, they didn't. They didn't much call. He said, "Go on." So I went. I, I, I loaded that thing from, and I went. Instead of going toward down toward uh, uh, down on the bottom where your uncle lived, yes. and then going up sunrise like that, I went the other way. Oh. Toward toward uh, uh, what was the name of that little town? Uh, uh, Gettys. Yeah. Oh. Toward Gettys, and then and I come down. Oh. That, you know, there's kind of a butte there. Uh-huh. Come right down like this. You come down into Lake Andes that way. So I went down there like that, and I took it down to the granary down there. And I think I forgot it. But all I think, I think I got $20 or something <laughs> like that. You know, really, really. Uh-huh. if you thought about the worth today, yep. you wouldn't even bother to, for $20. Yep. But I went down there like that. And so uh, soon as I got through, there always used to be a little place uh, in Lake Andes. And it's kind of a, it's flat, and there's kind of a little ridge right here like this. And there used to be a bakery there. And so uh, we'd, we'd go over there like this, and, and uh, uh, I'd go over there and get uh, cinnamon roll and eat it. You know, so that, and I, I, I didn't know for some, I never was crazy about candy. Mm-hmm. I never did like candy. I just liked that. So I'd eat that, and I'd come home, and I'd come back, go back the same way, like this, and I'd be away in the nighttime. When you would go come home. Come home. Oh. And so uh, my, I told my grandfather, I says. Uh, I said, I'm going to be late cause I, I, to, to go in there and come back. And he said, well, he said, and I had, he had a ho- ho- uh, two, two gray horses, Shorty and Dodd. So he said, don't, don't try to drive them, uh, grandson. He said, just let the reins loose. Mm-hmm. He so said, they no. go at their own speed. And they'll come home. Yeah. 
And so here I was coming down. I couldn't see a thing. As soon as I could see, come down like this, down by Sophie and Sarah's place, and I right down, turn in right there like this. Pretty soon they stopped. I was right home. <laughs> Uh, you could have gone to sleep. And it yeah, sure I could have. Yeah, but you see, see. That, that, but the thing about it is, uh, uh, my daughter, is that uh, those old men took so much time in, in the care and the training of all everything they owned, mm -hmm. the care. Not only the two-legged ones, but the four-legged ones and everything like that. They took so much time and patience. Mm -hmm. They had so much patience. Mm -hmm. And, I, and, and uh, uh, here I was just a, ki a kid, and I put that collar on. And even the cracker could all reach up and hook it like this on top, you know, and, and I put the harness on, you know, mm -hmm. like this. No, man, that little horse would stand there like that, stand there like this, like it was asleep, you know. Mm -hmm. And I hook it up, I'll hook, hook, hook it up, uh, and... and uh, when I got home at night, same thing, mm -hmm. unhook it, turn them out. Do you, do you remember where um, Grandma Waki Chunza was buried? Was she buried right at White Swan? Yes. She was? Right behind. Right behind there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, the church, the church is kind of like this. Do you remember what part of the cemetery she might have been? She, uh, uh, she in the, in, the, in, the, in, 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 right behind there, here's a church like this, and right behind here's, Here's a Missouri coming down this way, uh -huh. and here's what you call like this, and here's that what you call coming in that you were talking about, that <laughs> creek, yeah. And right here like this, and then right behind here is a, is a cemetery, right back there. Yeah. And, 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 and they had a g big gate right here, uh -huh. and then it was kind of like that elbow, like that. And so and you come in like this, and then over in this corner, like that, it seems like she was buried right about there. The northwest. Yeah, corner. north. Yeah, right in that corner. Okay. And uh, 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 I don't ever recall ever uh, knowing the old man. Uh -huh. He died before I, well, I could recognize. You know that what I was. You know what it was all about. Uh -huh. And then of course, then I was in Wakapala. See. Yeah. So when I came down there, but. And your mother was buried on My, the southwest. Yes, yes, yes. To the southwest. Exactly. Or southeast. Yes, southeast. Yeah. Okay. See, with all the Delorias. Yeah. Oh. But anyhow, and I went. I went and they moved him to Lake Andes. I went down there with, uh, with that uh, uh, priest. What was his name? Uh, at Lake Andes, I can't think of his name now. But he took me down there, mm -hmm. and I said, "I want to find my mother's grave over there." I said, "She's with the Delorias." So we looked and looked and looked and looked. Yes, they, they never moved her. Then. Them. Yeah. And so my my thought was they never did. They never tried to even get her body out there. Oh. So because they used to have a you know put them in a box. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it was it was a it was a. Uh, well, that's when I came with her to see your yeah. father. We went together. So we she up. probably was one of those ones. Then maybe that came up. Yeah. Well, she, well, you, you, I went down and Henry and I, we went over there to the, where they had, where they had the, the uh, that new church down uh -huh. by Lake, Lake Andes, you know. Mm -hmm. they, they drug that old building over there. Mm -hmm. They drug it, you know, the old church. Mm -hmm. It was the original church. They drug it over there and, and, and set it up. And so I got Henry and, and so he said, oh, I'm going to go over there. So we went over there and looked and looked. Yeah, she, they were doing this. There was no, and Ella was there. And uh, Uncle Van, of course, he was still alive, so he didn't, he wasn't there yet. But Susan, Susie, mm -hmm. she was there. And uh, but there were so many that that didn't. They're probably still down there. Never, never correctly. And then when when I heard about the the flooding of the of that dam, and hearing about those bodies coming up, I said, oh. I said, you know that. But you see, what they did was they contracted that to somebody. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, okay, we're done. Where's your money? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then they and just and, 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 and washed their hands. Yeah, and the, and the thing about it is, uh, is had we had, uh, had they been able to have hired uh, two or three uh, Dakota men who knew those, mm -hmm. they would say, yeah, no, where's this one? Where's this one? Where's this one? Where's mm -hmm. this one? Mm -hmm. And 
they would have made them live up to their yeah. contract, but they didn't. And the ones that they did hire, they didn't get to see what they were doing, no. so there was not a no. good communication no. between it. But the, I, I can remember where the little babies were buried. And uh, 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 they were all kind of together. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, because I think when they dug, when they found them, they found some with a little small little rib cage. Yeah. yeah. They knew that they were little babies. There's quite a row of them. There's yes, there's little, a row, yeah. Mm -hmm. The whole row of them. Mm -hmm. there, and some of them, when we tried to do some of the work a couple of years ago, we couldn't tell if they washed away, but the coffin, the little baby coffins are still there. Are they really? They're still there. Mm -hmm. So they either washed out yeah. or else they just took them out of the coffin and they, but they wouldn't have left the coffins there. So they must have, there was sand on top. So they may still no be kidding. in there. Yeah. And so that's what we'll have to do when I go back is um, the water's down again. So the core is going to try to uh, hopefully work with us so we can repair, we can yes. cover all of that yes. area yes. and just yes. leave it there, but cover it up yes. and protect it yeah. and not bother them anymore. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, can we break and then have... Hey, we're going. Okay. Okay. Okay, if we could finish the last part of this. Um, actually, there's two parts. Um, one about medicine, no. Hmm. And maybe some directions for the power company to consider when they're making the decision. Yeah, cool. And I think what they're willing to do is locate it farther south. Mm. And I guess to what you feel about, like um, Atea was saying, he said that it's like a glass of water. Medicine Knoll was a place where people went to fill that glass of water mm -hmm. with that spiritual mm -hmm. strength and that mm -hmm. power. So it's that kind of place. And so this decision hopefully will be weighed very heavily and they're willing to do that. Mm -hmm. So this would be the time to give them information mm -hmm. as to some considerations of that place because yeah. it's a very, very sacred site. Yeah. Because so you can't find it any other place. No. That's the no. only place. You can't just designate no. somebody. No, you can't, no. There's generations the of place. power there. Mm -hmm. so. Well, as uh, Ate will remember from the time I was very, very young, he told me the story about Sasue or Owl Man going up to Medicine Knoll to fast. Mm -hmm. And as I heard the story from him and then later many times from Grandpa Deloria, he was playing in this field hockey game. He was just a very young man mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. And he began call hearing the spirits calling him to fast. And uh, that went through one season. The second season, they called him again. Mm -hmm. And so they were on their way up towards Standing Rock, and they were passing by uh, Medicine Knoll, which is close to Blunt, South Dakota. Mm -hmm. and this is this is a story. I'm, I'll just do the best I can. Correct me, Dad, if yes. I'm wrong, because mm -hmm. this is what I heard. And I've heard this story at least at least ten times from Grandpa Vine, mm -hmm. and I heard it from before that mm -hmm. from uh, Ate when he recounted to me when I was small. So it's become quite a a living uh, story within me. And uh, so they shared with me that how they had stopped there, the entire camp had stopped there. Mm -hmm. His mother and all the relatives were there. Mm -hmm. And he went up there, it was early spring, he went up on top of Medicine Knoll, and he went up there to fast. Well, on the third day, his uh, Tahashi, Brown Bear, rode up to see, they sent him up there to see how he was doing. And as he approached up there, he saw him from a little bit of a distance and he was covered with rattlesnakes. And he came down off the hill, he was very, very, very broken hearted. And they began to to weep. weep and began to mourn. In fact, even the point of cutting their hair and beginning to cut themselves because he saw these rattlesnakes completely encompassing his body. And of course, then, uh, as I heard so many times, that early uh, evening, Late afternoon, early evening, down he comes, walking down. And of course, the people were just shocked. In fact, they were a little bit frightened. Yeah. And um, of course, some people uh, accused Brown Bear of being too frightened because not only from the stories I heard there, from, but also from George Whirlwind's soldier's mother at Rosebud, she also said this was 
one of the most powerful places that people went to fast. Mm -hmm. The whole area was a yeah. place of energy and power. Mm -hmm. And she said that a lot of people had not been fasting there for some time because some people went up and didn't come back. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how powerful it was. It was like, in order to go there, you really had to have yourself aligned with the energy, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, of course, he came down and he recounted the vision. And, of course, I heard all the different parts of the vision. There was one part left out. Mm -hmm. But it was very, very prophetic what he saw, mm -hmm. literally coming to the generation we're in. Mm -hmm. Because at the very uh, end of the vision, he came and there was two roads, a red road down this side and a white road down this side. On the end of this road was a white owl. Mm -hmm. In the end of this road was a red hawk. And he chose the red rope. And that white owl came and stood by that red hawk and said, we knew you were going to choose this rope. He said, in your life, you're going to kill four men justifiably, which he did. Mm -hmm. And he talked about how these different lodges, sweat lodges, inipis, represented the different generations that would come to today, this time of challenge and difficulty we'd go through. Anyway. So I'd heard this story over and over and over again so many times. It was kind of alive in me. So and at the same time, I did not want to go up there until the proper time. I wasn't really sure and so forth. So in 1980, I had the opportunity to have Sundance down at Little Eagle. I remember Pete Catches was conducting that Sundance. So immediately following that Sundance, uh, uh, Ate and I and another young man, we traveled to uh, see Grandpa Vine their peer. And he then reaccounted yes. the whole story. Yeah. And he said, Philip, he said, you need to go up there mm -hmm. and see this for yourself. So I remember approaching that uh, Medicine Butte up to blood. I remember looking up there and I could sense when I went there. I mean, I knew. I had never been up there. Mm -hmm. But I knew where that kind of crest came up there. I said, that's, that's the place. Mm -hmm. We went around and of course I felt a little awkward because here I was walking to somebody's house, <laughs> talking about my great-grandfather having fasted up there and about rattlesnakes and all these other things, you know, being covered with rattlesnakes and so forth, and he had this vision and so forth and so on. And so, <clears throat> of course, I knocked on the door, and I said, you know, I'm here. I said, I know this might sound a little strange, I said, but my uh, uh, great-great-grandfather was up on this butte. And he fasted here. And I told him the whole story and told him the part about the rattlesnakes. When I got to the rattlesnakes, literally, this man turned pale. Mm -hmm. And he was already pale. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, paler. <laughs> he turned paler. I mean, you could see this visible thing. He says, you know, what you're telling me is absolutely true. Because he said, when I was a young boy, I used to like to go up there because up at the crest of that hill, where this big rattlesnake is. And by the way, he told me that when he was a boy, there was red stones mm -hmm. at the tail of that rattler. There was actually the rattles were in there. And not only was there a red tail, there was a tongue coming out but of it. they're no longer there. No, they're no longer. He said it was taken away. There's a red tongue coming out of that rattlesnake. Mm -hmm. And of course, he said, but I'd like to take you up there and actually show you. He said, because when I was a young boy, he said, I used to like to go there in the fall when it started getting chilly, when all the rattlers would come in there, because he said there was a big rattlesnake dead in there. Mm -hmm. Down right there at that uh, point, uh, right there in the, in the hill. Mm -hmm. And there was kind of a crevice there. <clears throat> and he used to like to go and throw rocks in there, because when the rocks had hit down that <clears throat> crevice, he'd hear the shh, mm -hmm. and he said it was just full. And it just so happened that he said about three years before I'd come there, there'd been a cave-in. And that rattlesnake den had moved off the butte down past his house. And there's kind of a, it seemed like I remember there's a little kind of a creek, a dry creek bed down mm -hmm. there. They'd moved in there, and he said the state of South Dakota had come there with rattlesnake traps, mm -hmm. and they'd caught 5,000 of these rattlers mm -hmm. and had not killed the den. There was still plenty. And so <clears throat> he said, uh, so what you're telling me is very true. Early spring, the rattlers to begin to come out 
to begin moving soon, mm -hmm. the sun, all right? Mm -hmm. This is the time that he pitched forward, and he had this this vision, you know, which, you know, Vine talks about it, this book, Singing for a Spirit, parts mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. There's one part they didn't quite reveal yet, but it's all in there. Mm -hmm. It tells a lot of things. And what happened was, he, it appeared that he pitched, kind of pitched forward. He passed out, you know, when he had this vision. Mm -hmm. And again, this is just surmising, I mean, how could this happen? We know the rattlers, we know there's a huge den there. Mm -hmm. We know some people didn't come back from up there according to George Rowland's soldier, mm -hmm. told me about his mom telling him this. Mm -hmm. So what, I, what it made sense to me, you know, whether there's, you know, again, this is just looking back, that early spring, the brown bear went up there that afternoon to look in on him, the heat of the sun. He was out, passed out. Of course, the heat would probably bring that along. And he was covered with these rattlers because his body was warm. And of course, when it cooled down, the rattlers went back in, mm -hmm. and then he got up and came down and didn't see him. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we went up there and, 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 and saw that hole, not only the, that snake there, and I, I measured it, was pointing directly magnetic north. Mm -hmm. Magnetic north. Now, now, I was wondering if you took and actually lined that up, if that was something that showed where people were coming from the south to the north, or is it connected to a more of a matrix. Mm -hmm. There's a possible matrix there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing I noticed there was very unusual, and again, I'm not any herbalist, but I have you know, heard of old people talk mm -hmm. about different medicines, that somehow the energy, as I, the only way I can figure it out, of that knoll has created such a variety of different medicines I saw up there. Mm -hmm. The biodiversity. The biodiversity is very special on that knoll. Now, why that is, I can't tell you. I'm not, again, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm well, not a that's, biologist. That's very interesting because in the White Swan area, the Chashishina mm -hmm. is uh, abundant there in mm -hmm. that, that special area. Mm -hmm. that's so right. those certain holy areas that's have right. that yeah. for what, there's a correlation mm -hmm. there. We don't understand it yet, mm -hmm. but it's there. But it's, it's, it's that energy that somehow creates those medicines yeah. which then have the ability to heal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, again, this is just my perspective on it. And, that mm -hmm. you'd have to be the one yeah. that would, would, would say this. But tr truly, this is a treasury, mm -hmm. not just for our own indigenous peoples, our own tribal people, mm -hmm. but for humanity. For mm -hmm. all of humanity. Because this is one of those sacred places that has medicines. Mm -hmm. It has a history. It has a spiritual foundation. And it wasn't just known to us, because again, through that Rosebud, they knew about it. Yes. The old people knew about it. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, after time, kind of memories dim and so forth. But to, to me, it's just my mm -hmm. perspective. I mean, this area mm -hmm. is something that could be such a living, uh, holy place, holy place mm -hmm. where young people could come, not just our own yes, in right. native young people, mm -hmm. but young people properly prepared to say, this is one of those sacred places. Mm -hmm. And this story... Again, we have to talk about it within the family, whether how far we sh would share this, because there's more, more to that vision. Mm -hmm. It tells exactly what's happening now. And even Brown Bear mm -hmm. was the one that took that white buffalo as prophesied. Mm -hmm. He was Brown Bear. It's so interesting to me, because he was the one that took the white buffalo. And he was the one, because I remember Grandpa Vine saying, and you see, Brown Bear told the truth. He's vindicated after all these years. <laughs> because there were some people that thought he was... Too, that he had lied, or he, had lied or he was yeah. too scared to go all the way, or so forth. Yeah. So that I, oh, that's all I can say is my experience. I remember I went off the side because I wanted I wanted to get a sense of coming down off that hill, and I remember I ran into a big rattler, mm. big rattler. It didn't bother me; just went on down, and you could see down where the people camp down there, mm -hmm. and so forth. And I've been there, I guess, four times, mm -hmm. and each time I've I've walked that, I've, I've prayed and you know, made offerings along that. That uh, the, now it's interesting too how that s snake curves, mm -hmm. and, it, and it'll be really interesting to compare that to some of these Southwest tribes, how they made their snakes, yes. and how many curves in that snake, yes, mm -hmm. and so forth. And also with the awareness that um, there's a smaller snake to the southeast, mm -hmm. um, it's probably I think the larger one is what 30 meters, the small one probably is maybe as long as this couch. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's like a baby snake. Mm -hmm. And um, 
but the majority of the pits, of course, are up on the top where yeah. the larger snake is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess the, the direction that grandfathers and uh, when they were when uh, they'd come up to, and they would uh, come over to visit mm -hmm. my, uh, my grandfather and they would sit in there <coughs> and, they <coughs> and they were so they had so much patience so much uh, time was had no meaning to them at, at all it was doing what they had to do and that was, and that's the thing that I find today is so, time is so, I don't know, mm -hmm. you've you got to do it right now, immediately. Mm -hmm. But they, 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 would, they would take and think and prepare what they had to say prior to ever saying anything. Yeah. yeah. The thought was connected with yes, the words. Do, yeah. Sometimes yeah. we just talk without yeah. any thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just rattle on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess um, what would be helpful is to provide some direction to um, the tribal representatives in the treatment of medicine note to, I guess, request or point out some important things, and you have done that by talking about the powerful significance of it being a holy, holy place. <laughs> and it's just like places like Jerusalem and yeah. places like that for other cultures and other religious um, or, um, entities. But I guess what we need to know and to let the other tribal representatives know is how we want that to be treated. What Oahi Electric is proposing to do is to, n now they realize that they can't put a tower up near the petroglyph. They know that, they, they had no clue. They wanted to put it there because it's the highest point. Mm. But after being reading the book and then being able to be appraised by other people like Ben Rod and Lance and the archaeologists about the significance of the site. What they're proposing is that a smaller tower, not a smaller tower, but the tower be put on the smaller hill to the southeast of that butte. So it would be down by the fence. There's that road that mm -hmm. goes to the west of the hill of the butte. And so it must be nearly a mile or a mile and a half to the southeast. And they said they're willing to put it on the lower butte and make it less obtrusive. And mm -hmm. the rancher who now owns it is a different rancher than the one yeah. that you knew. Mm -hmm. He's a former um, school principal and peer, and he seems to be pretty receptive to um, recognizing that people still want to continue to use that hill as a prayer place. Yes. So I think those would be issues that would be important to guide them. Mm -hmm. And if that tower does go in, what are some things to consider? Mm -hmm. um, they have said if um, there was an absolute refusal to, or a desire for the tower not to be there, that they wouldn't do it. But at the same time, they're willing to, to do it in a good way. Mm -hmm. So that's the decision they're trying to make. Mm -hmm. And so they've asked to take this videotape and see mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. especially what Ate thinks. Mm -hmm. since he's the well, one of the things too is that I don't believe that they would go down and uh, what's that big cathedral in New York City, the big, big cathedral, mm -hmm. big, uh, big uh, uh, church. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if they would take and tear half of it down to put a, a tower in its place. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. For the simple reason of the, of the, uh, of the value, spiritual value of, of that uh, where so many people that are gone now have worshipped there in that cathedral for generations like this and like that. And you, you, you couldn't take an electric com company and say, okay, we're going to tear this down because we want to put a tower in here to, so we can put, uh, sell some more electricity to somebody that's uh, maybe down 15 or 20 miles from here. Because that's all, you're getting back again to uh, Mazaska. And I think that's, uh, unless, unless uh, our people are going to have uh, 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 some values that you can't buy with money, mm -hmm. we're in a sad, sad, sad shape. Mm -hmm. 
really, really sad. And I, I know that the, the old timers, that's the reason why they recognize those things. They recognize those things. And people coming down, I don't care whether you came from Shine River or you came from Wakpala uh, 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 or Sisatan, or where you're coming, you're going to come down like this, they would always camp there, stop. Because they need to be revived, to be filled again. It's like I was telling you about the glass. You have to pour the water back into it because you can't go with an empty glass. And I believe that that's, that, that's so important that um, uh, I don't know how an electric company could say, well, we'll just, you know, ignore that. I don't think it can be, be ignored. Uh, I wouldn't want to say this, but what if they did put the thing in there and all of a sudden lightning kept striking it, they kept falling down. They'd have millions and millions of dollars tied up in the darn thing. And they would try to say, well, uh, for some reason, uh, the lightning hit it because it happened to be standing up high. Mm -hmm. But we know that, uh, that our old people, that's the one thing that they were not, that they couldn't control was lightning mm -hmm. and thunder. And that's the only thing that really our Lakota people, Dakota people, were a little bit scared of, mm -hmm. was the, the, the uh, lightning Joaquin. in the, yeah, the Joaquin people. And supposing that would happen, if that did, and it could. I, I would say that, and again, this is just my mm -hmm. humble input here, but what the meaning it had for me, mm -hmm. and I think, of course, I'm getting older now, but I was mm -hmm. just a young person mm -hmm. at the time I first went up there, and I was just a little boy when I heard the stories, is this is a place to go and fast. Yes, yes. It's a place for our young people. Yes. Our young people are coming back. Yes. There's certain places, I went to Bear Butte to fast, there's certain places, mm -hmm. this place has a power yeah. for our young people. Whatever happens, the protection of this, I mean, if they can do this in a manner that completely does not disrupt the energy of the place, I mean, if they do it away from it, you know, in a way so it's bad, but I think the most important thing is to reestablish this mm. and tell the stories so people can go there and fast again. Yep. under proper instruction of the people because one of the things that struck me having had some study around the world of different spiritual symbols mm -hmm. in all spiritual traditions the snake mm -hmm. represents of course in India they call it the Kundalini the spiritual awakening the Quetzalcoatl who was the most powerful leader and one of the most powerful prophets of the Aztecs, Toltecs actually, mm -hmm. we call him the plume serpent. This whole idea of the serpent or the s snake is the spine. It's the full uh, uh, um, awakening of the spiritual energy, of course, represented by the headdress. Mm -hmm. That snake up there was the most clear, and I'll bet you any anthropologist around the world would agree with this, mm -hmm. that that sign of the snake the clear message. is a clear message and it's the awakening uh, of course, in India, they call it the Kundalini. This is this, what they call the coil serpent at the bottom of the, f of the spine. And then when that is awakened, it awakens the entire being, of course, and that's what that was about, to cry for a vision, to awaken mm -hmm. one spiritual being. It was the beginning of all things. And so the greatest strategy <coughs> would be any way to interrupt that special place of energy mm -hmm. and deprive the future generations who I truly believe are turning more and more to the spiritual understanding of things. And are there's, in need of that. They're in mm, need of that. Yes. And there's not many places left That's right. that are really held sacred. Mm -hmm. So if this wonderful gentleman who has this land can see this as a place under proper, respectful you know, caretaking, a time, let's say, when it's time to fast in the spring, where that can be a place where people under proper instruction yes. mm -hmm. can go there. Because I know from George Woolman's mother, she said some people didn't come back. Mm -hmm. and maybe it's because that, that rattlesnake den was up there. Mm -hmm. But it was not some place you just took uh, um, in any kind of disrespect. There's a power there. There's no question. Mm -hmm. Why is the biodiversity all different there? Why did they take the time, clear on the top of that knoll, to build that major petroglyph? Mm -hmm. I mean, even to the point where it had red uh, rocks for its tail. Mm -hmm. And it's huge. Mm -hmm. And that little snake. And, and showing, you know, to me, what it shows is, is from this place, 
more snakes or more, oh, there's like I, I, I felt a, like a nest there mm. of little uh, and I understand there was actually from the farmer was saying there used to be another uh, white rock like a like an egg mm -hmm. so here was a place to go to re be reborn and create more spirit mm -hmm. now that's interesting that you say that because in some of the pits there's some of those rocks mm -hmm. so I don't know if those are rocks that caved in, but some of them are filled with rocks. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if those are, but it's um, definitely a, a hard, hard decision to be made because I think that if they, there's pros and cons about locating the tower to the southeast. The, the con part of it would be obviously when the Dakushkashka and the Wakantaka come like they do in ceremonies, if there's, if there's light, sometimes they don't come. I don't know if it changes the energy or what. I have no idea, but, um, and the crow side of it is if the landowner would realize that it needs to be located far, far down, and then and a, a, some kind of a memorandum of us understanding or something could be created to honor what you just said, that it's a holy, holy place. Mm -hmm. I don't know, that's a hard, well, I, I mean, certainly, um, um, it should. It needs to be declared officially, legally, and if, if really, like Dad says, none of us are going to here alive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So whoever we're here today, we're going to be gone. That's right. So whoever temporarily has that land, and it sounds like he's a very good man, you know, he got to look inside his soul yes. and his heart and make a decision whether or not he wants to leave a legacy for the future. Yeah that's positive and good for the people and pays back what good he's gotten from that. Mm -hmm. And so to mm -hmm. me, that's what this is about. This is a legacy that's been passed on. Mm -hmm. You know, it's and a legacy. The caretaker and he's the caretaker mm -hmm. for whatever yeah. the creator, in a way, the creator always tests us. He's been given a big test mm -hmm. in his hands. The test is, is this something I'm going to leave as a legacy and honor the spiritual power and the legacy here, or is it going to be exchanged because of more consideration of money. Scott. Because nobody's going to put that in our grave with us. No. <laughs> so again, those are just some, 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 some thoughts about that. But you know, that's my experience in the story. And I'm sure there's other stories mm -hmm. yes. from other places that, that will come to be once the story is a little bit more told and it's respected. Mm -hmm. So your answer, Ate, would be that you would prefer that it wouldn't be there? No tower would be. No. There, there. No, no, no. And and, uh, and and we we would never know. But uh, it's like a lot of things that has, has happened. Uh, if they put that thing against the advice and the wishes of our uh, Dakota people, who held it as a very very spiritual place where they could be renewed. And we fill back with, with the with the spirit, wanahi or however you want to call it, that they would be uh, subject to harm. And we don't know; it's never been built yet. But however, what if that thing what you like in the in you see like the lightning, and they would be involved with millions of dollars. And of course. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but there's sometimes there's too many times where we worship the dollar. The dollar is worshipped, and which is true. I don't care where you go, you find that wherever you go, you find it in sports, you find it in everything. And so I don't know. It's, it's, it's just one of those things that I would question. In a sense, it would be like putting the tower on Bear Butte. Yes. Yes. That's yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, did I, did I, told, I told you about that one place um, um, at Wakpala, they have a uh, chain buttes coming. And so um, Jasper Real, Real, was it Real? Yeah. Uh, they told, the old people said, don't put that over there, that tower over there like that, that, that was uh, at Bear Butte. But the, the electrical company, they would put the thing in there like this. And so he rode down there like this. 
and uh, uh, they said they don't know because they found him later that he had when he had he had read, written underneath that like this of course he didn't know anything about electricity he went like this and so bingo like this and and he was wearing spurs and burned two like that on the horse and killed him but the horse didn't die you see so anyhow the um, uh, Ma uh, McLaughlin who was the agent over there he was uh, Ieska, like myself, even though, I mean, I hate to say that, but uh, it's true. So anyhow, he uh, went over there, and they said, there's no way. There's no, no way he could reach that. So maybe, I'm, I'm just wondering. They, and they said, don't do that. The old people said, don't do that. And um, So it's bigger than us. Yes, yeah, that's right. That's uh, in, in other words, how do you explain it? How do you explain those things? I don't. I I can't. I know that much. I wouldn't even try. Okay. Well, I think that the, the the bottom line comes down to the decision makers, and that is, all of us are accountable for our actions, and all we can do is listen to our elders, mm -hmm. and then people make their decisions. But whatever decisions we make. We have to live with it because whatever comes out of it over the generations and so forth, we remember to that. Mm -hmm. We don't know in a hundred years from now when we really, mm -hmm. as humanity grows in its spiritual awareness, they're going to look back and, and see this event. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to see, uh, uh, here's this place that we now would understand and we don't quite understand it yet because we're just kind of coming into that new spiritual awareness that that white buffalo promised. Mm -hmm. But now... In the future, we're going to see things with a depth. That energy is beginning to rise up again. Mm -hmm. It's beginning to rise up. Our young people, we see mm -hmm. these young yeah. people that are gifted. Yes. And they're go we're going to begin to see and experience more and understand these things. And people might look back and say, you know, one of the greatest tragedies was them not understanding or listening because all they could see was with their physical eyes, mm. not their spiritual eyes and not with their heart of what this means. I think that says it. I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want that story, though? Yeah, the white book. Yeah. Let me go ahead and. Yes. I'm gonna uh, now. Uh, I'm gonna want to share this story with you, and, I, and I'm gonna ask Latte here to correct me anything I'm wrong because I've heard this so many times from Grandpa Vine, mm -hmm. and I mean, first before I heard about Grandpa Vine, you told me since yes. the time I was small, mm -hmm. and he told me the story of how. <clears throat> Um, our old man, Sa Sui, had begun to prepare this bay horse. Mm -hmm. And he was the head holy man and also chief of the White Swan Dakotas, of that, that group. Mm -hmm. And he began to prepare this particular bay horse, and he wouldn't let anybody else who'd ride him. And of course, uh, both Grandpa Vine and Abte told me, he says, in those situations, you never would ask, well, why don't you let anybody else ride him? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, people watched, and he had his own business, mm -hmm. but he prepared that. At the same time, he was mentoring Brown Bear, Matori. That was his nephew, but like his son. And he was the one given responsibility, as my dad shared with me many times. The father had such a close emotional uh, connection with the son or their children that they would get an aunt or an uncle to really mentor them. You know, it's like uh, Uncle Wilford and, and Dad and I sat and talked about the story many times. Then Lionel Kinua, uh, who's since passed away, Dad asked him to give me a hand. So anyway, so uh, they were getting ready for this big buffalo hunt. And I guess there was three bands of Yanktons together. Mm -hmm. Struck by the Ree was the head chief. Mm -hmm. And the time they said there was 300 Yankton riders in the camp, 300 men. Mm -hmm. on horseback and the scouts had gone out you know looking for the herd and they said it was a it was a, a big herd would come up and in fact he he said it, it, it in the old old herds were a hundred miles long and 50 yeah. miles wide yeah huge the and they said that they would only see black. one of these maybe once every 80 uh years and just see them let alone take one so this is as far as i know 
uh, what Grandpa Deloria shared, and I know you heard it mm -hmm. back from Tipi Sapa before that, mm -hmm. way before him, mm -hmm. as a little boy. Yeah. So we know what what they what they're telling here is an actual account of what happened. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so for some reason, um, Brown Bear came and said, "You know, Ate, may I ride this bay horse in this hunt?" And everybody was su surprised because he gave him permission. Hmm. He was just a young man. And I think I always think about the story encouraging the young. Just a young man. He said, yes, he said, but he said, be careful with him. Hmm. Treat him real good. So sure enough, uh, you know, they were all gathered in their societies, very disciplined. And <clears throat> the scouts came back and they said, there's a great big herd out there. Hmm. Now, the other part that was shared with me was that there was a prophecy that before this winter time, before this time of great spiritual difficulty would come, this white buffalo would appear and would be taken. It would be a sign to the people that even though they're going to go through this difficult time, that they would have the power to make it through. Mm -hmm. That the ho most holy sign of God, the Creator, Wakantanka, would be there for them. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> sure enough, they all went up there very disciplined in their societies. They got to the top of the hill and all of a sudden, the scout yelled out, there's a white one right in the middle. Well, at that point, um, a according to, to Grandpa Deloria, they just let go. Pew! The whole works went. Mm -hmm. the, the young guys didn't hang out to the edge like they usually did to catch the ones on the end. Because, you know, those experienced hunters, because he, he shared with me at the time, he said, those buffalo at those days were so big mm -hmm. That I'll tell you, they just throw their head like this, and they yep. just got a horse right up. Yep. Yep. And they said those good hunters had to get clear up to them, and when they let their right arm up, up, up underneath their arm, front arms up, they had to shoot right up there and hit between the ribs because otherwise they were so big and tough, the arrow would pop by itself. So here they went. But you can imagine, here's this herd going. Here's the 300 men trying to make their way in there after that white buffalo, and one by one they dropped back. One by one. Finally, there was only two riders left, a rider on a black horse and brown bear on this bay horse. And I remember, I've, must, I've heard this story a count, I, well, countless times. I can't remember how many times I've heard it because I always loved the story, mm -hmm. both from Ate and both from Grandpa Deloria. But Grandpa Deloria always stopped at this point because that black horse had been running so hard, he began to bleed. And he always said this. He said, that man in his mercy and his love pulled that horse back, okay. stopped him. And he made the point to me that if we have, no matter what the spiritual goal is, no matter how great we think we are and what we can achieve, if we hurt li other living things in the process of getting there, that's not it. Okay. Even the horse. Mm -hmm. That's life just as much as a human. Okay. So he put, and, he's, and he always say, in his, in his love and his mercy, he pulled it back. He says, go on with him, go on with him. Mm -hmm. And he said, Brown Bear just <clears throat> dug in. And Brown Bear was left-handed. That's an interesting thing. He was left-handed. And so he had rid of it. So he just dug in there with the last he had, and he finally got up on him. And they started, he just was white with it. And of course, he laid back, got clear up on him. And of course, he reached up like this, and whoosh, And he said that arrow just spun him deep. And he went down. And he cried, he I, got, I got him, I got him. He ran away, yeah. He ran away, and then he was went down. I got him, I got mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. And they all came around. And here was this relative. Now, they didn't understand what this winter time was. Because if you live in truth, mm. if you live in honesty, how do you know what dishonesty is? Mm -hmm. If you live mm -hmm. the way we lived, with this love, this teospai, this, 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 this care, where really even a, a okay, they told me when old uh, Shumanu uh, gave me my name, he said, there was no, there was no joy in the camp if you came back with a hundred horses and you came back with one person dead. Mm -hmm. No amount of horses could equal one man. The idea was to get the horses out, but nobody's known it. <laughs> so anyway, they stopped there. And they prayed. Mm -hmm. And I remember, remember Grandpa Deloria going quite in depth of how they put uh, Peiji in his ears and nose. Mm -hmm. 
uh, sage in his ears and nose, and they made, literally, made a um, what do you call, like you call it, uh, uh, like a the carry, mm -hmm. covered it with sage, mm -hmm. whole body, mm -hmm. and they lift carried the grass. it, yeah, like like a what was it like a like a, like, a yeah. Yeah. yeah, but, yeah. but, but what they didn't they personally they, physically they all the way, physically carried it. Mm -hmm. They had all put sage. They had four in. horses, two, two, and they had it between the four horses. Like yeah, that. and they had all sage. Because the men couldn't carry a buffalo. Yeah. They had, they had, they had it lifted up. Uh -huh. this they had tied it to tied the it horse. On, 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 on all four horses. horses. Because two, two. they said that it, it shouldn't touch two the ground. ground yeah. mm -hmm. Just like, didn't you say they mm -hmm. were such holy women yes. that they beaded, they they quilled the bottom of their moccasins yes, yeah. and they would carry them from place to place and wouldn't let them touch their feet yeah. touch the ground. Yeah. Well, that's how they carried it. Except, they prayed that first time and then they came and stopped. Prayed again. Sec, third, to see, sec, first time. Second time, third time, fourth time they brought him in. They mm -hmm. stopped four times before they brought him. They said he had totally pink eyes. His tongue was totally yeah. pink. Mm -hmm. His toes were totally pink. Mm -hmm. He was pure albino, and that's what they, I mean. I remember. Uh, they, they can't see good because their eyes are. But totally pink. You know, most of most uh, cattle or buffalo, you know, you know them. They have a dark tongue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pure pink tongue. Anyway, they got him in there, and of course, all the women were lined up. I can't do that too good. <laughs> you have to do that part. Of course. <laughs> because here they were bringing mm -hmm. the most sacred relative. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they knew something was happening. They didn't understand. Mm -hmm. But they knew, they knew that the Creator had given this gift to have one more meal together mm -hmm. to prepare themselves. Because from that lineage that would remember this, from that comes out of of Alma and Saswe, those 18 daughters and four sons, that from this would be different people would come and have different responsibilities. And like, like Divine says in the back of the book, Singing for a Spirit, they'd have to suffer for the people. It wouldn't be an easy tour. But if we, that if we held on, we'd make it through there. So anyway, and I always wonder what they, what they did with the hide, but I, I don't know about that part. But they had a big feast. They ate. And after the feast, uh, struck by the re, they had the kind of the dramatic recreation, you know, in order to, of course everybody knew what happened, but, you know, in order to enshrine it in the young people's mm -hmm. minds. And so they were struck by the re, says, who was the man that slayed this white buffalo? Of course, Brown Bear came up. And they fanned him off to the four directions and did all those kind of things and so forth, honored him. And of course, the, the, they, they knew this was some kind of mystery going on because they knew that Sa Sui, or, or another name I've heard him called back there was Owl Man. This is because of that owl that came to his dreams and that owl that would hoot when he'd do his healing. You know, that owl would hoot. That's about the time they, these two newspaper people stopped him on his way to help and, and they started making fun. He stopped like this and lifted the right foot and the owl hooted. He lifted the left foot and the hawk screeched. <laughs> These guys took off <laughs> mm -hmm. because they were in there. So anyway, um, so then he said, uh, then who, who was the man that prepared the rider and the horse? And so here comes oh, old man bringing that bay horse. And, and dad would have said that he had braided uh, those eagle feathers in his, in his mane, in his tail. Designs, mm -hmm. thunder and lightning on him. And he led him up there. And then, struck by the reef, said, what's his name? He says, just what I want you to guess, or something like that, mm -hmm. however you'd say that. And he had a big bag, a buffalo bag, buffalo hide. And he reached in that bag and pulled it out. And when he did, there was a necklace of eagle claws that big. And he threw it over his neck. He said, that's his name. Eagle Claws, he said, has you to mm -hmm. his name. Mm -hmm. Eagle Claws. Mm -hmm. And they said, we cannot forget this because we will make it through this time. Mm -hmm. And see, that's why, that's why I relate Medicine Knoll to the White Buffalo 
because it was on Medicine Knoll that he had part of that vision that talked about these four purification lodges, mm -hmm. which comes to us here, mm -hmm. that we would go through this time. Mm -hmm. But out of it, so it's all connected. It's mm -hmm. all connected, I, as I see it, mm -hmm. and it, that, that this this vision. So that's you know, if I'm did I, did I recount it okay? The mm -hmm. details. The um, uh, the uh, the uh, of course uh, before when the buffalo hunters came, they killed so many of our what's called, and they would just kill them for their hide, and that's all. And they would just uh, but uh, the uh, old people said the whole side the hill looked black because they were all moving across there like that, and uh, the. Uh, uh, and the white buffalo was always surrounded because the other buffaloes protected it. Mm -hmm. In other words, it would never be out on the edge of the herd. It would always be in the middle of the herd. Mm -hmm. and all these buffaloes would be around that because the buffaloes uh, regarded it as, as, as sacred, mm -hmm. uh, even, though, even though they're mm -hmm. animals. They regarded that thing. That's what the old people said, mm -hmm. was it that that no matter where they went, that they would never let that white buffalo get out to the edge. They'd keep it always, keep it inside, and they would graze on those hillsides. In those days, the uh, 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 that uh, buffalo grass grew about like that, almost uh, they said about almost hip deep. Mm -hmm. And the buffaloes don't stop any like a cow; they keep walking. Mm -hmm. They keep walking in, in what's called like this. This is what builds them physically. And so forth. Now, then you take a cow, and it stands in one place and eats, you know, and you have to throw food to it, like that. But the buffaloes, they kept walking. They would keep eating, eating, eating. And when they would ukche, why well, that would f uh, fertilize the ground, mm -hmm. see. And then when they would die, that would also fertilize the ground, so that there was an abundance of that of that uh, of that uh, grass, mm -hmm. that tall grass, and then. That a lot of their songs would be sung, and they would sing about the buffaloes, and they would sing, and you would hear that, you would hear that uh, the wind blowing through that, that grass. It would it would whistle. You've heard that. I know that. Yeah. You've heard that whistling sound, and so um, uh, um, uh, I think you gave me a, that uh, eagle bone whistle, didn't you? Give me an eagle bone whistle. And you blow that thing, you know, and you, you and you can hear that grass. You can hear that wind blowing in that grass, and uh, for whatever it for whatever it means, or for whatever what's called like this, everything was tied together, and nothing was laying loose. Everything had a what's called like this, and it, and it was so. And all people always believed that everything had to come together this way. Mm -hmm. And so, where you have it in the inside. And so, uh, I think that um, uh, so far as I can determine that uh, the, all those things that those old people passed down uh, had had purpose, had reason. Mm -hmm. Don't you think so? I think so. Yeah. When, when you recount this, I was looking through some of my dad's old stuff. Yeah. And he has a writing where he talked about <clears throat> one of the last big buffalo hunts. Yes. And he said that they had had they had to get um, permission. Yeah. To go, but yeah. all of the people were excited. Exactly. That this was going to be the last big. Mm. Hunt. Exactly. And exactly. That written down yes, I this yes. The one. That's so right. He has, um, I I knew that. I and he we've shared that with your father. So he talked to you. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. He said they were all excited because it was the mm -hmm. big la one yeah. of the last ones. Yeah. And they all assembled, mm -hmm. and then and then they were all waiting for the leader to, to uh, mm -hmm. give the signal, and then Scott's coming in saw the, mm -hmm. saw so the. This, I imagine you could probably date this back to Struck by the Re. Yeah. When he was the, he was a the head chief there. From the sixties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back and then when they saw that, then you couldn't hold them. And they said everybody because of the fact of getting that white buffalo meant so much. That's interesting about brown bear being Chatka, because mm -hmm. both uh, my sister Roxy and I are Chatka, mm -hmm. both left-handed. Yeah. Left you know who else is left-handed? Who? Your, your uh, uh, niece.
niece, Gloria, is the only one left-handed. Mm -hmm. And so you have seen this, and in, in, uh, I've been saying that that comes out, mm -hmm. that left-handed of his comes out, and I saw it in Deloria. But I, he noted always the left hand. Mm -hmm. So she is then? Yeah, mm -hmm. she's left-handed too. Mm -hmm. And that's unusual, because we don't know, you know, the only one we know in, in both, uh, both uh, 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 her mother and my family, only one that's left-handed we know is Brown Bear back there. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, what, and what, do you, what do you think the responsibilities are with those generations of hardship and the gift to the people? It's, it was, like you said, it was all connected to a reason. Yeah. And probably is the ultimate is to hang on to those teachings because maybe when Sasue had that vision, he saw what was going to happen, didn't he? He knew that there was going to be that that darkness and that loss, mm -hmm. so that that maybe there were responsibilities laid to certain people so to maintain some of them. Mm -hmm. Well, I think too is that uh, 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 it was it was given to the people in such a way that uh, these events and so forth would be remembered down through the generations. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It wasn't something. It was just, uh, just more or less uh, uh, given without thought. Mm -hmm. It was given with a, with a reason for something in mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is the first time. I mean, I'm, I can. I mean, really, this is the, one of the primary archetype stories I can remember clear back when I was five. Mm -hmm. I mean, wait. I mean, I, I, in fact, I can't remember I first hear it. And I'm 57, and this is the first time. That it's just naturally come to share it. I've shared it orally with other family members and other places, but you know, it's for these younger generations coming up mm -hmm. uh, that have this responsibility. Mm -hmm. That we all have this. You know, I think all tribes have those stories. That within them is the power, and that's the energy. I mean, when you because you can feel it. I mean, you can mm -hmm. sense him. You can feel him on that horse. Mm -hmm. You can feel what it was, and that's you know, for me and my little struggles. And I had plenty of them. It's that's the thing that kept me alive. Mm -hmm. It kept me alive, kept me struggling, and not not giving up, mm -hmm. no matter what happened. I kept remembering that. No, I can't do that mm -hmm. because we have this. We have this thing. We have to carry this through. Mm -hmm. And in all those times of hardship, the thing that I can remember that all the okanas and the grandpas, and especially my grandma, I mm -hmm. remember when she did her mourning after my grandpa died. The place to go would be out in the Wakpas, the creeks, mm, yes, the hills, yeah. to go to those places to gain yeah. power mm -hmm. and to gain strength. And I remember <coughs> when my grandpa William died, and he was like 107 when he died. And I remember I was looking at my grandma and I thought, well, I wonder what grandma's going to do now. And she was so busy taking care of us that she, she, um, I remember I was watching her and I thought, I wonder what she's going to do. And I remember she would disappear into the cricks. And yeah. you'd hear her, and she would be chea o money. She would say, do. Wana, uh, wichachja wana, uh, wana iaya. And she would be crying. Yes, and huh? she would do her mourning in the cricks. Mm -hmm, and she'd mm -hmm. be wandering off by herself. And she wouldn't want us to hear her, no. because, but she needed to do it. Mm -hmm. So she went out, and she did that in the cricks. Mm -hmm. And I remember I used to be following her, and then she'd be... She'd yeah. Do her shawl look. <laughs> she mm -hmm. you well, me to go yeah. home and quit following. Uh, and uh, uh, Grandpa Delory was the same way. Yeah, he did that, and yeah. he was crying in the yeah. hills. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he would do that. I I, I remember that. I remember. remember him. Huh? I can remember him going. And my my uh, grandmother, I'd say, oh, I'll go over there. Yeah, don't go there now. He he has to be by himself. Uh -huh. And so he'd be out there for the longest time, and pretty soon the sun was beginning to come in the evening, like that. And I'd see him, he'd stand up and he'd walk sometimes, and I'd see him going like this, and you know, making signs and with his hands, like that. And uh, uh, so uh, she would not let me go over there. And pretty soon, she, when he'd come walking back, at that, at that time the sun was just about over to the, going down like that. So she said, why not? She said, go. Oh. So I'd run and I'd, I'd, I'd take his hand and he'd bring me back mm -hmm. to the watch car. But I was so young, so little, that I didn't uh, understand mm -hmm. what he was doing, mm -hmm. nor, nor, nor the purpose, mm -hmm. until I got older. Then I start remembering back and remembering back, and then 
when Wilford and I went down and we spent that time with your father down at the what's called, we spent several days down there. I was with you. Yeah, oh yeah, you were with me, yeah. yeah with Uncle Bill and I, well, yeah, the, the three of us went down there like that. And we, we, we talked about things like that. Uh, and my brother, Wilford, was, uh, of course, raised by the Kadats. And in, uh, in, uh, 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 my grandmother, uh, 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 Kadat, was not able to have a child, so she was really made something with Wilford. And so when we visited down there with your father, why, he shared so many of those things with us. And as I said before, uh, is it in all peoples we have historians and to my way of thinking your father was a historian but prior to him there are other people who were historians because they had to remember those things you have to realize they didn't write them down didn't record them they were never recorded they had to be yeah they had to be and not only that but they had to be repeated uh, as precisely as possible and the, uh, uh, men like your father would take a great pride in being exact, right on the money. Not close, but right on. Mm -hmm. Because he realized that as it passed down, then the, the, the ones who are responsible for carrying on that history, they had to be people who are responsible and they had to be uh, 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 very spiritual people. And as a result of that, why they, this, the history could be carried. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> we're only living in 19, the two, year 2001 or 2002, whatever it is like this. But what about the children who are going to be lived in 2050 mm -hmm. or 2060? Mm -hmm. What are they going to say about us yeah. if we don't, if we allow something like this? Yeah. And they say, don't, didn't you have any, any, any courage, even at least to make a, a, a uh, protest? Mm -hmm. And I think that, that uh, the, uh, the government would, would uh, honor at least when you, when you say, well, my gosh, you took everything. Now you want to take this? Mm -hmm. yeah. You got everything else. Yeah. yeah back, when they look back 50 years, what would you rather have? Uh, a story about a, a radio tower or a story about yeah. the sacred butte and all the <laughs> things that went with it? You know, yeah. what, what do you want? Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah.